Positive Spin, presenting positive, innovative, and solution-oriented news from around the world. On today's program, we'll profile the work of environmental activist Rodrigo Todd, recipient of the 2017 Goldman Environmental Prize. And we'll learn how a young girl blinded during the conflict in Gaza is pursuing her education. Then we'll see how the Kiss Cam at sports events is promoting diversity and acceptance. Following that, we'll hear the Playing for Change version of the song Everyday People. So before Cabot Yaksa built his museum, he was a homesteader in the early 1930s. Um, he came and in we'll visit the Cabot Museum in Desert Hot Springs, honoring the indigenous peoples of the area. But what's he so well known is because he rediscovered. Finally, we'll hear a personal message of peace from musician and artist Herb Alpert. An environmental activist and Goldman Prize recipient, Rodrigo Tot from Guatemala, led a movement resulting in a landmark court decision. The court ordered the government to issue land titles to its indigenous community to keep environmentally destructive nickel mining from expanding on their land. For generations, the Kekchi people of Guatemala have lived in harmony with the land, sustainably farming in the mountains above Lake Isabel. We have always called the land Mother Earth. Without the land, we wouldn't be able to live. But in the 1960s, nickel deposits were discovered on Kekchi land near Lake Isabel. The state of Guatemala granted transnational companies fast licenses. No one filed a complaint because they were afraid they'd be killed. You can see that there's pollution moving toward the communities. As a result, the water is poisoned and many of the fields are not as productive. Fearing for his people's future, Rodrigo Tote stepped up to try and secure their property rights. He began helping the people of Agua Caliente document their historic ties to the land and registering their ownership with the land registry office. When we asked for our land titles, we learned that the pages proving our ownership had been torn from the registry. The government knew that if we couldn't prove ownership, then we couldn't prove the land was legally ours. A new mining company arrived with plans for expanding the nickel mine into the mountain communities above the lake. Security forces began evicting families. They've tried to destroy us so that there would no longer be any indigenous people left in Guatemala. Determined to fight back, Rodrigo began collaborating with local and international NGOs. Together they started building a case against the Guatemalan government to secure Kekchi land rights. My people told me, have no fear. You fight for us, and we will support you. In 2009, they filed their case with Guatemala's Constitutional Court. After a two-year battle, the court ordered the Guatemalan government to issue land titles and restore the pages torn from the land registry. The mining company had no legal right to expand onto Kekchi land. It was an historic victory. Una alegría muy grande. I was overwhelmingly happy because the highest court in the land ruled in favor of a small, humble community. Despite the court's decision, the Guatemalan government 
and the mining company have brazenly ignored the ruling. Undeterred, Rodrigo is taking his case for land rights to the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights to prove that the state promotes mining by willfully violating indigenous land ownership. This is precedent setting. There has never been a case in the Inter-American Court acknowledging the right to indigenous land ownership and the right to protect the environment. Rodrigo has paid a high price for his activism. In October 2012, his oldest son was murdered during a staged robbery. His younger son was injured in the attack and left for dead. The strategy was to kill my son, to scare me off. I lost my son for this struggle. I'm sad because my family is no longer complete. But I will continue this fight. We must be united, because if we're not, we cannot win. It's only unity that gives us strength, where we can all feel supported to fight for the common good. For Outstanding Environmental Achievement for Central and South America, the 2017 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Rodrigo Tote, Agrocaliente, Guatemala. Positive Spin is pleased to welcome our new youth correspondent, Jenilyn Ramos. Hoda, a young Palestinian girl, was blinded by a stray bullet while attending school. The following segment tells the story of her struggle to pursue an education and build a new life. There is a big hematoma, as you see, starting from here, taking a big mass effect on the brain. She's still in a critical situation. Now we can't judge of her future uh, progress because it is a massive injury to her brain. كل <تصفيق> 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 <تصفيق>
أما غير أكيد حي عندهم راحة أكيد إنه خلص راحوا الإسرائيلية لكن هذا مش حتبقى عندي راحة لأن خلص يعني دمر تعتبر يعني لأنه خلص لا لي تعليم ولا هي لي حياة زي زي باقي العالم جبت يعني سبعين مسجلة في الجامعة الإسلامية قبلون اللغة العربية يا أما كيف كانت الحياة كيف تحب يعني خلنا عندك أمل ليش بتصلي ولكن لما تبدأ أصلاً المرحلة هاي مع كامل مع أي شيء أنا من ذاتي أنا ماليش في الأكل وحسة أنا طلبت التعليم أنا مني تزييع وتعلمت خلص وصار لي أنا هعيش For years, kiss camps have been a big part of American sports culture. This year, love has no labels, but a new twist on the kiss camp. gets better every day. Our friendship has no religion. Love is about who you are and not what you are. I don't see a wheelchair. I see the love of my life. Our love is greater than anyone's hate. Now 
Now we present a music video of Sly and the Family Stone song, Everyday People, produced by Playing for Change in partnership with Turnaround Arts. Sometimes I'm right, and I can be wrong. My own beliefs are in my songs. Butcher the bacon, the drummer, and then makes no difference what group I'm in. Sometimes I'm right and I can be wrong My own beliefs are in my song The butcher, the banker, the drummer and then Makes no difference what group I'm in Cause I am everyday people There is a blue one that can't accept the green one For living with the fat one Trying to be a skinny one Different strokes for different folks And so on and so on It's gooby dooby 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 doo Sha sha We got to live together I am no better A young world traveler moves to the desert in Southern California to build his home and discover something which will change his life forever. Here's the inspirational life story of Cabot Yurtza. In Positive Spin's ongoing series, Inspirational Life Stories, we're here at the Cabot Museum. The museum is named after the man who is really the founder of this area and was so involved in the development of Desert Hot Springs. Can you tell us about Cabot Circus life prior to building the museum? So before Cabot Yorksa built his museum, he was a homesteader in the early 1913s. Um, he came in um, homesteaded, was able to purchase his property for $10, 160 acres. But what he's so well known is because he rediscovered the mineral waters of the area. So he was the first modern person to rediscover the hot mineral waters. A lot of people have discovered the coal, but he was the one that discovered both um, spring. He loved to observe people, so he did that through his travels. So when he was really young, at the age of 16, he went to Alaska and 
Nome, Alaska. I will meet really wonderful friends with indigenous people there. Um, and, and then he traveled to Cuba with his family. Um, there he learned how to roll cigars. And from there they traveled to either Seattle for a little bit, came down to California, and actually it's kind of sort of settled in California where the whole family um, owned a whole citrus grove. And that's actually the reason why he came to this area, because in 1913 in Riverside there was a really bad freeze that many people lost. Um, to a livelihood now in the York says. And so the next step is what, what was he going to do? And so he and a family friend um, came to the area and decided to try homestead. And it's a good thing that he did because we owe a lot to Cabby York says. What inspired him to build a museum? When he was building his museum, he was actually living um, down the street. It was a down um, south, well, not too far from the property. And what inspired him is that um, many people that were staying, celebrities were staying at the B Bar H Ranch. And they would come and usually just talk to him. And he was sharing his stories about his travels, the people he met. So he really enjoyed that. So he wanted to sort of build this museum and it was in his mind to always build it as a museum and his home. What is Cabot's relationship to the local indigenous people that's reflected in the museum? Okay. So what he wanted to do when he started to build this museum was he wanted to showcase and highlight the rich culture and heritage of the Native American people. He wanted to stay away or from the stereotypes of that time of, you know, um, um, headdresses, tomahawks, savages, he really wanted to showcase the culture. And so he decided to um, build the uh, museum, his home, in a Hopi style um, fashion. So that's what he did. I understand that Cabot is known as Mr. Desert Hot Springs. Can you tell us about that? Well, I want to say he's Mr. Desert Hot Springs because, first of all, he was this um, interesting person. Um, they would share out his travels to everybody who came in, um, encouraged him to look around at his property. But I think another thing that's Mr. Desert Hot Springs is that before there was city government, he was instrumental in bringing streetlights, the town hall, the post office, the fire department, him and the improvement association that he and others develop for the good of the community. Hmm. How does the museum benefit the local community? Um, that is a very hard question. At, at the same time, maybe an obvious question. Uh, here we are in museum, a museum in Desert Hot Springs. It's an asset to the, to the local community for them to understand what this Cabo Yorks had did for the community. So they also had some civic pride in what was the beginning. So I think we always need to understand what is our past and what, why was things spilled this way of oh, who we discovered the waters and why other many spas because working along with Cabo Yorks was LW Coffee who understood the health benefits of the mineral waters and having that accessible to everybody. So those were all sort of our founders of the area. And so I think if people understand what they did and for the community, they will also see the hot springs in a different perspective and really have civic pride. So I think that's something that I really want to um, part, you know, impart is the civic pride in your town and what, what both uh, Cabin Yorksa and, and uh, W Coffee and others did. Um, for the community at the very beginning of it. Herb Albert is a legendary musician who is also a very accomplished artist. Positive Spin taped a personal message of peace from Herb Albert at a recent art opening. Yeah,
the end of God's hand, the moment. Peace is the end of love is the answer. I got that from Louis Armstrong. It's a love. Yeah, it's okay. We all need more love in our lives. All our lives. Everybody has the same right to be here. Everybody has the same ticket to the same call of life. And we um, should be respectful of each and every day. Thank you for watching Positive Spin. This show was made possible through the kind generosity of the Patty and Jack Wright Foundation. For our past episodes, please watch and subscribe to Positive Spin TV on YouTube and like us on Facebook. I'm Bill McCarthy. And I'm Jenilyn Ramos. Now it's your turn. Inspire. Empower your community. Create your own positive news. Positive news. Oh. Positive news.